Hello, I'd like to illustrate what you can do by going to philotastic.org and clicking on the link for the Philotastic web portal, which allows us to execute three different workflows for getting species phylogenies. We'll start with the first one, which involves finding scientific names inside a PDF file. So as an example, let's consider the uh, whales and, and dolphins, aquatic animals known as the cetacea. The cetacea are mammals that arose from land-dwelling ancestors. The hippopotamus, a semi-aquatic mammal, is a close relative. And recently I noticed a paper on this, so I'm going to look that up on PubMed just by searching on these terms here. This is the paper that I want, and it's going to take me a few clicks here to download it and save it on my uh, computer. So we'll get a PDF, click Save, and I'll just call that whales.pdf. Okay, and the reason the paper is of interest is because it has it has names of various animals in here. So Megaptera noviangeli, for instance. So let's go back to the Philotastic web portal. On the home page at the left, you see your list of species, if you have any. On, on the right are the ways to make new lists. So I want to extract from a document. I click on that, select my file. It's called whales.pdf. So I will call this whales and add some description in here and click go. And this sends it off to a server that extracts scientific names and it says it's processing the file. So now when we look at this, here are all the names that I extracted, 44 names extracted out of that file. And what I'd like to do now is just get a tree. So this sends the list of names off to another web service that goes to OpenTree and finds a phylogeny. It usually comes back pretty quickly. And I'm going to make a few changes to the way this is presented. I'm going to make the branches a little bit thicker, and I'm going to laterize the tree. It helps us to see it a little bit better. So down here we have the hippopotamus. And here's the Mysticeti, the uh, baleen whales, and the Odontoceti, the two toothed whales, and together they make up the cetacea. So I'm just going to highlight that group here. So here's the group cetacea showing their phylogenetic relationships within the larger groups uh, of mammals, for instance. Here's the carnivora. Uh, if you're curious about one of these species, if it's not clear what it is, for instance, what's this species that we saw before in the paper, Megaptera? If you click on a name, you can see a link to EOL, so this will open up a page to EOL. So that's the humpback whale. Um, we can also, using the same menu here, display a picture. And this is what it looks like if we load about half of the pictures. So in this tree viewer, you can take this view, you can generate an image for download and click on that, and this, this gives you the file that you can save, save to your desktop or save in a file. Now let's take this a little bit further. So the cetacea are one group of aquatic mammals, but they don't actually include the, the seals and sea lions, for instance. The seals and sea lions are related to the carnivora, and there's another group that's related to um, the elephant, the dugongs and, and manatees, another group of aquatic mammals. Um, my colleague Dale actually made a list that includes representatives of each one of these groups. So there's some whales in here, there's a seal, uh, there's a dugong, there's a manatee. So what I'm going to do next is upload this list and I'd like to show you what happens when a name doesn't match. So we'll change this name Equus caballus the horse to Equus unicornis, a mythical creature, and then we'll try to upload that. So we go back to home, we have our lists on the left and our methods for creating new lists on the on the right so I'll click upload my list I have a text file with one name per line I'm going to click on that it's called going further text so we'll open that so this is three groups of aquatic mammals all right here's my list so we see a bunch of names up here. There's 16 names that match. There's one that didn't, Equus unicornis. So what we can go in here and do is just change this to the correct name and search again. So most of the time when names don't match, it's because of a spelling error. So now this name appears in our list, Equus caballus. And let's get the tree.
takes a moment to load. Okay, and again I'm going to change the appearance of the tree just slightly here. Okay, so here's the group of, here's the hippopotamus, here's the cetacea that we saw before, so let's highlight that. Here is, so Ursus maritimus, that is a, a polar bear, so this is, that's a sea lion, that's a South American sea lion. So here's this group of uh, the sirenia that's related to carnivores, so the seals and sea lions. And then up here with the elephant is the dugong and the manatee, so the sirenia is this third group of aquatic mammals. So there's another, uh, uh, another example of a phylogeny. If we add the images, it looks like this. And again, this is something that you can save to your desktop, use it in a presentation or something like that. All right, finally, let's go to this choose taxon workflow. That's the third one we talked about. Um, I'll just put a name in here, hominoidia. We'll call this homino hominoids. Put some description in here. And we could choose a location restriction. I'm just going to choose has genome in NCBI. Okay, here's my list. There's 10 different genomes in this taxonomic group at NCBI. There's only about, I think, six different species here. Sometimes there's multiple genomes for the same species. So when we choose get tree, here's the tree that we get. Uh, just as before, we can click on these links and we can see pictures and we can read the uh, Encyclopedia of Life pages on these things. Okay, so just to review, we've gone through three different workflows, one starting with a text file or a PDF file where, where the names are extracted out of a, a larger body of text. There's a second workflow where you have specifically a list with one name per line or, for aficionados, a list in Darwin Core archive format. And then it's also possible to designate a taxon and then create a subset from that. There's also a Philotastic mobile app, and the workflow for that is to capture names from signage using optical character recognition and then to manage those lists and to use them to get trees. Okay, my name is Arlen, and on behalf of the Philotastic team, I'd like to thank you for listening. If you have a comment or question, or you'd just like to get in touch with us, go to bit.ly slash philofeedback.